So when I saw that this documentary, Quiet on Set, was coming out, I knew I wanted to watch it. There's a couple of clips that we pulled from the documentary I really want you to see because I'm so curious to get your guys' take on them. For the record, Jason was one of the producers on the set of The Amanda Show. This is where this girl Brandy was working as a background actress. He was described in the documentary as very boy next door, very approachable, super friendly to all the kids. All the moms loved him. Nobody had even a second thought about the motives or intentions of this man. There was an email from Jason. She let me read it. And it was a very innocent email. It just talked about the shows that he had been working on. After that, they were emailing more. She would tell me, oh, I got an email from Jason. He's doing this, he's doing that. I didn't see any harm in it. A Couple months later, she was sitting at the computer and all of a sudden I noticed she had suddenly shut down the computer completely and got up and ran into her bedroom and slammed the bedroom door shut. And I said, Brandy, what is wrong? She started to cry and she said, I got an email from Jason. But should it not just like immediately make you feel a little weird that this mom is letting her child, her, her child, email back and forth with a grown ass man? It's a picture of him naked masturbating. And he said he had sent it to her because he wanted her to see that he was thinking of her. I went back and forth with, should I call the police? Yes. They're gonna think I'm a bad parent because I allowed her to talk to this person. I struggled with this and I finally told myself, I can't call the police. All I can do is make sure I keep her far away from him. I can't call the police. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not a parent. In what world do you convince yourself not to call the police when your daughter is receiving photographic evidence of a pedophile working on a kid's television show network with dozens of other children who know and work with this man every day because you think it's gonna make you look like a bad parent. The man that was abusing Drake Bell throughout his experience working at Nickelodeon was a guy named Brian Peck, who was a very well-respected dialogue and acting coach inside of Hollywood, working with a lot of kids. He worked significantly with Leonardo DiCaprio throughout his child stardom in Hollywood. But even when Drake's dad was still managing his career, he immediately picked up on extremely problematic behaviors happening to Drake and to other kids at the hands of this complete monster. You hear scuttlebutt about the business and what you gotta watch your kids and this and that. So I was very attentive. All the other parents would be seen and not heard, which I would never interrupt anything, but very rarely set in the green room. I'd always be offset somewhere where I could always keep my eyes on Drake. The fact that he was the only parent to do that also is completely pathetic to me. Every other parent just said, bye kids. Have fun, see you never. And unfortunately, I started seeing Brian start to just hang around Drake too much. And it didn't, didn't set well with me. Drake would be in the dressing room or something and in would pop Brian and um, uh, just touch Drake. You know, do things that, wait a second, what are you doing? Drake can put that on himself. And the thing is, this is in front of people. Then he'd, he'd maybe walk over to Drake and be feeding him some lines or whatever and put his arm around his waist, put his hand up on his shoulder and kind of run it down his arm and things like that. And this would happen routinely, it was just always uncomfortable. Uh, but eventually it kind of just all comes tumbling out. He couldn't keep it in anymore. Um, he had to recount every single thing that happened to him to the police. And on the day that Drake had to go to court for Brian's sentencing, something that makes your stomach turn ended up happening. Check this out. It was a different time, so I think it was a little easier to go to and from a courthouse and not worry about Twitter that night or TMZ paparazzis being there. On the day of sentencing for Brian, I get to the courthouse. It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen. His entire side of the courtroom was full. 
full. There were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. And my side was uh, me, my mom, and my brother. In other words, his entire side of the courtroom for a man being arrested for all kinds of disgusting acts of literal pedophilia was full, completely full. Welcome to Hollywood. Brian had been convicted, but getting all of this support from a lot of people in the industry, and yeah, I was pretty shocked. My mom got up, she had a statement. I wasn't going to address Brian. There was no, no reason to. I addressed my statement to everyone in the room. I looked at all of them, and I just said, how dare you? And I said, you will forever have the memory of sitting in this courtroom and defending this person. And I will forever have the memory of the person you're defending violating me and doing unspeakable acts and crimes. I'm like literally about to cry all over again. It's only the second time I've And that's what I'll remember. I will forever have the memory of the person you're defending violating me, doing unspeakable things to me. And there you are defending him in public, in the open. After you know this individual was a convicted child sex offender. But that's Hollywood.